I ruined this trigger so you don't have to. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Nobody and today we're at the Untrained Unprofessional Workbench. And I have to say that I installed a Volkortsen HP Action Kit into my Ruger 1022 and the trigger pull was phenomenal. It was two pounds and change and I was really, really enjoying it. But afterwards, I felt really bad because, well, I didn't learn a darn thing from it other than Volkortsen makes a really good product. But I didn't learn anything about triggers at all on the Ruger 1022. So brought me back to the workbench and I started playing with the factory trigger, which if you remember from previous videos that the trigger pull was five pounds and change also. And uh, well, I ended up uh, <laughs> ruining the trigger in the process of, because at one point um, I was doing really good and I went the wrong way and yeah bad advice on YouTube and make me making assumptions on my part so anyway I wanted to tell you about what I learned and show you so that way you don't make the same mistake so before attempting the trigger job I did a quick YouTube search just because I wanted to see what was out there and what made the most sense to me and really quickly I came across three different methods and I'll show you those right now all right, before we get too far in there, you know, it's like there's a concept that we have to talk about really quick. And that is how the hammer and sear basically kind of interact to uh, either increase the pull weight or decrease the pull weight. And it's all based off of if you have a lever and a little weight down here, if you're pushing down on your lever where this is the pivot point to try to lift your weight up, the shorter this is, the harder it's going to be. Whereas if you add more length or increase the distance away from the pivot, it makes it easier. Okay, so now how does this apply to the hammer and sear? Well, if this is your hammer pinhole right here, the sear is going to be your lever the farther away you get the sear from that pivot, the easier the trigger pull is going to be. Does, hopefully that makes sense. So the area that we have to work with is right here in these two engagement surfaces with the sear and the hammer notch. So the farther you get this sear down this engagement surface, the easier the trigger pull weight is going to be. So we want to somehow move it down. So the first method that I saw, and I'm gonna call it the add-on method, was that in order to get it farther away from the pivot, you take a compound like a JB Weld and you add material onto the hammer that way it pushes the sear down and you keep adding and adding and adding until you get your desired trigger pull weight. So yes, that is an oversimplified way of talking about it, but that's all we need to go over on that. So the next method that I found, and I'm gonna call this the takeaway method because it literally involved taking away a little bit of this engagement surface here on the hammer and that reduced how positive the hammer and sear engagement was. And the gentleman did it with a Dremel and a stone and he just free handed it and just took it away. And personally, since I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, that seemed uh, a little too hairy for me. Not something that I wanted to try attempting. Okay, so the last one that I found, and this is the one that I'm actually going to try doing, and calling it the AGI method because I saw a three minute video and it showed a, an AGI instructor briefly talking about it. It had like little excerpts of what they were doing, but didn't show all of the magic. And that is what initially intrigued me was trying to figure out, okay, what are they not showing? But I think 
showed enough to, with a, a little bit of experimentation and uh, observations, you know, whether they're, they're correct observations or incorrect observations, you will, you will see later. But the AGI method, what they did, they, they did two things. And it does involve the, the pivot method here, but what they did was they shortened these engagement surfaces by reducing a little bit off of the bottom of the hammer. And uh, I'm not a lefty. And on the sear, taking off a little bit of material here. And that reduces the amount of engagement surface. And by doing specifically here on the sear, it reduces the distance away from the lever because you take your point right here and if you move it down here, you're going farther away from your pivot. So that's why it's a pivot method. So this is what I am going to attempt to try again. Um, on my first attempt, I did get it down to a really nice uh, three pounds. And, uh, but the problem that I was having was on the trigger reset, about one in 10, one in 15, the uh, hammer would follow as I was letting off of the trigger. And that was, I believe, because I came and I took off too much of the sear. So I'm gonna try going about this a slightly different way so I have a new 1022 uh, trigger group here, courtesy of eBay. Here's the one that I had messed up. Nice thing is, is that the trigger pull is in the same ballpark as the original. So this is going to continue to be a more of an apples to apples kind of comparison. So that way I'm not <laughs> working with a three and a half pound trigger and I miraculously get it down to three pounds and <laughs> it's all good. All right. so. Last time, what I did was I started with the sear and I beveled this top edge, which I also think I went too far. I'm not going to start with the sear this time. I am going to start with the hammer and reduce this section right here, trying to kind of keep it kind of flat. And I am going to use here on the, uh, on the casting, or the metal injection molding here, there are a little, well, there is a little step. I'm gonna use that step as a reference point as I'm taking material down. Now, when I did it the first time, I actually used this stone and I just drew it back and forth. And I think what I'm going to do is use my Dremel this time just to do it a little bit faster and then finish it off with the stone. Now, I also vowed that I was going to uh, check this a lot more often in the trigger group versus uh, what I did previously. And I think that would have helped me a little bit. Another thing that I had figured out and I kind of figured out kind of late was that after working this, I left a very sharp burr here on the very corner and that was affecting my trigger pull. And I think that is also something that contributed to me going too far. So just kind of keep that in mind, knock down that sharp burr before you test your trigger pull. All right, so a little bit on the hammer and I'm at four pounds, eight, four pounds, seven. So averaging four, seven and a half. Want to check, make sure that the hammer isn't going to release on the reset. We're good. Everything is still safe. Not getting a whole lot of movement. Okay. We're still good. All right, so as I mentioned before, I believe that I took too much off of the sear and I'm going to attempt to do less at this point. And the area that I'm going to be focusing on, if you look here on the sear, 
is this top corner right here. I'm gonna put a little bevel onto that. And this can go pretty fast as I discovered, so check your work often. All right, I'm gonna put this back together, give it a shot. All right, so right now I'm sitting sub four pounds. Now, how did I get here? Well, one of the things that I can't emphasize enough is to make sure that after you do any type of stoning or dremeling or whatever is to completely remove any potential burrs. And one of the ways that I found to do that is use a polishing stone because you can feel any sharp corner or anything that wants to snag really well with this. Whereas even like a fine India stone, it's going to want to just cut it and you won't feel it as much. Whereas this, you will actually feel the drag. So get an Arkansas stone. Um, they're great for getting in and polishing. You're not really removing a whole lot of material. It's just nice for fine tuned stuff. And what I had done is I had actually found when I just put the trigger group back together that the trigger pull weight went from that four pound, seven ounces up to high fours to a five pound, one ounce. And I was like, what the heck? And then I went, oh yeah, I need to completely deburr everything because it will give you a false positive if you do not. And take off some more on the sear here. All right, and let's put it back together. Oh, make sure you clean off your engagement surfaces. So any type of grit is going to affect your trigger pull as well. So clean them off really good. Okay, so I just got done doing a couple of gentle passes on the hammer this time. And I went ahead and, of course, restoned it. I'm at three pounds. 8.9 ounces and at this point I'm really paying attention to make sure that the hammer isn't going to let go on the reset. I also want to pay attention that because this is something that happened um, on the first go around I'd put it on safe I'd pull the trigger and then as soon as I took it off a of safe it would the hammer would drop. So I'm doing these safety checks as I go, just because I wanna make sure that one, if I go too far, I catch it right away and can solve for it. And two, I don't know, I just felt like there had to be a number two. I can't think of one right now. All right, so I'm gonna focus some more here on the hammer and I went ahead and sharpied so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. And I did a quick little pass right here just to give you an idea of the size of the area that I'm working on. I'm not trying to blend it far back. I'm just trying to reduce that engagement surface ever so slightly. So you have to use your imagination a little bit. We're looking at the hammer like this from the bottom. Here is your little engagement surface. This is the engagement surface and this goes over the horizon. Well, this is where the sear meets up. What I had done when I was using the stones to try to deburn everything, well, I kind of rounded some things off a little bit. So instead of keeping this perfectly flat all the way across, I had introduced basically high spots where if you ever try to uh, or, or think about pinpoint pressure. So as I was putting that hammer against the sear, I was putting a, a, all that pressure in one little area, which was increasing the amount of effort that it would take to move versus if I would have kept it nice and flat, it makes it for, for a nice smooth uh, transition or trigger pull. So. What did I do once I discovered that? I went ahead and I took that corner and I ran it along my stone 
just very gently paying attention to that high spot, watching uh, where I was removing material, and I brought that back down to a flat area. Now, once I brought it down to that flat area, I'm in the twos on my trigger pull. So I kind of overshot my three pound area, but you know, two and a half to two and three quarters of a trigger pull, still pretty nice. It's um, very, very good. So wanted to point that out to you guys. Um, and it did pass all my little safety checks, 211, 214, 214, 2.6. So just depending on how I'm doing things, how fast I do it, but it feels glass smooth. So, you know, it's kind of funny that I, I sit here and think about the failure that I did with this original 1022 trigger group. And I can't help but noticing that it's a, a perfect illustration of what this channel is all about. I started Nobody Training as a way of pushing myself to get out and try new things and to learn and be better and share them with you along the way. So hopefully that you can learn from my successes and my failures. And I'm a firm believer in you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. And believe me, I tried to learn and tinker with this trigger group as much as I could because I already knew I went the wrong way with it, so I might as well just get as much out of it as I could. I did get it down to one pound at one point, but it would have just gone full auto. So it, w it would have been exciting, but uh, <laughs> not really the direction I wanted to go. So, but hopefully this inspired you to get out, work on your own stuff, improve them, get them to where you want to be. And all I can say is thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.